Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly. Let's look at some free response questions from the 2024 AP Pre-Calculus exam. Wow. Here's the first one. They're always the same. Remember, this is a calculator active part. And they're always going to give you two different functions. This one is a graph. They might give you a table. They might give you an equation. They give you the graph and an equation here. And the first question asks you to find a composition of functions. By the way, as you're reading this problem, did you notice they tell you some points that are on the graph? That's just to verify some things for you. That's going to come up later. They're not going to tell you that unless you need it. So you're going to need that here, uh, you know, coming up. But anyways, so part A1, it says a function H is defined by, you know, G of F of X. I like this form the best because it tells us we have to find F of X first. They want us to find H of 3. So, you know, when you're answering this question, you want to clearly state, all right, you're asking me to find h of 3, so I'm going to say h of 3 is going to equal, and then what do we do? We just plug in a 3 here to the composition of function. So I'm going to write g of f of 3, and as we do that, now I can find f of 3. Over here to the side, I'm going to say, well, f of 3, what does that equal? f of 3 equals, I go to my graph, this is function f. If I go to 3, it says the output value is 1. So f of 3 is 1. That means that I really need to find g of 1, right? Well, that's not difficult, but this is a calculator uh, question, so I do need to break out the calculator. And so I pull out my calculator, and in y1, I type the function. I double-check it to make sure it's right. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. And then what I can do is if you want to look at the graph, that'll give you an idea of what it looks like. It is exponential, and uh, the b value there is equal to 0.7 so right it's decay all right keep that in mind but they want us to find we need to find g of one so we need to plug a one in there we just need to plug a one into here so i like to do it like this from the home screen i just hit vars and i go to the right and it says y variables when i hit enter then i get the choice to have y1 show up here and i'm just going to put function notation so I want to plug a 1 into y1 which is my function g and I get 2.0412 and I think if I write that down, we are good to go for answering part one. Part two says find all the values of x for which f of x, so make sure you're going back to the right function. That is the graph that they give us here. Ah, oh, I like it. But f of x has to equal one. So that's this right here. So f of x equals one. It's this line right here. So where does the graph equal that line? We have three places. When x equals three, it's going to equal that line. Here's a point right here. When uh, x equals zero and when x equals negative three. So I'm going to write it out like this. I like to make sure when I'm answering a question that I reread the question and I start my answer answering that question directly. So it says find all the values of x for which f of x equals 1. So I start my, re my reply with f of x equals 1 when x equals negative 3, x equals 0, and 3. Part B, find all the values of x as decimal approximations for which g of x equals 2, or indicate that there are no such values. Well, let's get the calculator back over here. We already have the function in y1, right? So you double check it, yep. And we want to know when it equals 2. So to do that, I plug a 2 in, I'll check the graph out, and I notice that there's an intersection right here. That's second, calculate the intersect. Choice 5. So you have to enter three times, and you'll get an intersection right here of 1.057. And so I will write that out. And I'm assuming you know you have to go out three places, right? So go out three places. You can truncate or you can round it. I just, just truncate it. Just go out three places and stop. That's probably the safest idea. The next question for part two asks, did, you have to determine the end behavior as x increases without bound. It means as x is getting super large. So let's look at, we have to use limit notation. Let's look at our graph here. We're looking at the blue graph. Okay, as x gets very large, what happens here? So I always tell my students, you can fix the window if you want. Let's fix the window. I mean, we have x max is 10. What if I make that 1,000? Okay, can you tell what the graph is doing? Look at the blue graph. It's going down to zero. And if you weren't quite sure, you could always plug a value in, right? So we could do that y1 value, and we could plug in 1,000 or another very big number to kind of figure out, like, what is happening to that function. And you can see that eventually it goes to zero. So we need to write that with limit notation. The way we do that is, again, we're, we're focused on an x going to the right. It increases without bound. So we say the limit as x goes to the right or increases without bound. We say x going to infinity of g of x. Okay, so what happened to our function? It eventually went to zero. And so we express our answer using mathematical notation of a limit. Perfect. Part C here, determine if f has an inverse function. So it has to be a function, the inverse. Let's go up and look at our 
our graph right now. We're looking at F. So notice before, like they told us we had these three points that were on the line, and we used that information later, right? Well, we're kind of going to use it again because, you know, here's F. We have three inputs will give you one output. So let me write that down. Here are the three places that the function equals one, right? So an inverse, right? That's F to the negative one there, but we call it F inverse. An inverse takes you back. So the inverse of f, if I plug in that one, will take me back to three. If I plug in to the inverse of one, it also takes you back to zero. And we also have a negative three in there as well, right? I guess I'll put that down here. So f inverse of one also equals negative three. Well look, we have one input going into the inverse and it has three different outputs. That is not a function, right? So what do they want you to do when you answer this question? You have to say that. First, we say that f does not have an inverse function. It has an inverse, but it's not a function. It's a relation. And then part two says, give a reason for your answer. Well, what was our reason up here? We had the inverse has one input with multiple outputs. So let's write that down. Here's how I write it out. f inverse has input values with multiple output values. For example, an input of one would have output values of negative three, zero, and three. Therefore, the inverse is not a function. And here's the deal. Some teachers teach that a horizontal line test here will determine if uh, you know, the function is invertible or the inverse has, is a function. But that's not good enough according to the, the scoring rubric. You have to mention specific values or you have to mention something about you know, what a function is with unique inputs having unique outputs. So that's basically it. That's number one for FRQ. Good luck out there, AP Precalc students. This is Mr. Kelly reminding you, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. See ya.